Good evening, welcome. So glad that you could join us. Tonight's our first parish town hall, live, coming to you from Coral Gables, St. Augustine Catholic Church. I hope you're with us, everything's good, you're able to catch us on the web and, and you're connected with us. Tonight I'm joined with my Ed McMahon. Do you know who Ed McMahon is? Uh, no idea. <laughs> I've got to catch me with this beat follow <laughs> Is that a compliment or should I be worried right now? <laughs> Johnny Carson, do you know who Johnny Carson is? It's, it's sounding more familiar. Maybe okay, nice keep show. going up in the ears. <laughs> All right, anyway, so I have Michelle Ducker Lopez. She's our director for the new evangelization here at the parish, and she's also an associate campus minister at the University of Miami. So we're coming to you live, another way of trying to connect with you, the parishioners and the community of St. Augustine. And so before we get started, Michelle, can you lead us in prayer? Yeah, I'd love to lead us in prayer. And it's just a joy to be here. I'm so excited for the people that are going to phone in tonight, the comments that we're going to receive, and the participation of our parishioners. And um, it's just a real gift to be able to connect with everyone live stream. So Amen. please join us um, while you're watching us in an opening prayer. So in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, amen. amen. God, our Father, we just thank you and praise you for the gift of another day, um, especially for this opportunity to come together through the gift of social media. Uh, we just pray, Lord, that you would anoint our conversation with uh, Archbishop, with the mayor, and that you would just fill us with your Holy Spirit, that we may be inspired to allow this, um, this time that's cha challenging in our culture and our day um, to be an opportunity to grow closer to you, to use it for good. So we just give you our hearts and our time tonight, and uh, we just thank you for the many blessings and all the good that you're bringing from this situation. And we pray for all those who are sick, especially those that are caring for them. Amen. Amen. So tonight, Amen. as I said at the beginning, it's just a way for me to connect with you. Um, I don't know about you, but we've been working hard. I think I think more hard than we ever <laughs> worked before. I mean, we were busy before, but I feel like now we've ramped it up um, a couple levels, and it's yeah. it's been awesome. But yeah. it's really um, man, I'm kind of tired, but I'm feeling good. Feeling yeah. good tonight. <laughs> Yeah, it's been crazy, and, and I have to tell you, sometimes I'm not even sleeping at night because my brain is just, I can't shut it off. It's thinking, thinking, how can we connect better? How, what, what, do we, what can we do to get the community engaged? Uh, um, so it's been fun, it's been crazy. Uh, and by the way, if you could please join us, share with us some comments on Facebook Live. I'll be taking your questions, we'll be answering them. Um, I think that way, I can hear from you, maybe some concerns or questions you have about the parish or, or in general, we can answer those. And also you can text us at 786-688-HOPE, 786-688-HOPE. And Michelle's going to be uh, doing the text messaging. I'll do the Facebook Live and we'll take some of your questions and hopefully answer them here. But as I was saying, you know, I, I studied in Detroit and we would do that. I did that for four summers. Mm -hmm. And um, we studied, it's a, it's a degree in the new evangelization. And if at Mass, I, at some of the homilies, you've heard me talk about the new evangelization and some of my studies. And, and I'm doing this paper now on Fulton Sheen to, for at the end, I, you have to present this paper uh, for the licentiate. And um, I kind of feel like Fulton Sheen right now, actually. Yeah. You know, like he's a big TV person. Yeah. I feel like we're getting a little, a little taste of Fulton Sheen yeah. in his life. Well, you know, he was doing this way before anybody was doing it. You yeah. know, and so to, I, in class, I, it didn't prepare me for any of this. So it's. <laughs> it didn't it's, talk about crisis and no. how to best <laughs> ramp up your communication strategy. And oh have to gosh. learn to do all this technological stuff. Thank God we have great parishioners that are here helping us with the production. But uh, it's, it's just every day something new and wanting to stay connected with you. But um, we. One of the things that I wanted to talk about tonight, and Archbishop Wenske is going to join us, and uh, we'll be able to ask him a couple questions and see what's going on with the Archdiocese of Miami. And I think it's important for us uh, to hear from our leader and uh, to ask him some questions. So Yeah, that'll be wonderful to hear from him. And um, I've really appreciated the emails that he's sent out to keep us updated and in the loop of the decisions that he's making. And yeah. I think he's um, been an inspiring leader through all of this. So it'll be wonderful to hear from him. And kind of like you were talking about, Father, um, the new evangelization, that this is not something that you learn in a classroom. You just kind of allow the Holy Spirit to help you adjust as things happen. And um, I don't know, there's been, there's so much bad news or scary news or news yeah. that brings a lot of fear and anxiety. But um, I don't know, I've just come to realize that, yes, there's fear, there's anxiety, there's worry, and we have to take the right steps to, to be careful and to make sure we're doing our part 
to continue to build our culture and um, community in the right direction, especially health-wise right now. But man, God is doing something so good in the midst of all of this craziness, all yeah. the, the bad that we see, like there's light in the darkness, you know? And I feel like we're experiencing um, a transformation in our church as we, like tonight, this is a transformation of our church that we're going live stream and that we're experiencing that God is, again, like bringing good from even difficult situ situations. But we're experiencing church in a whole new way. Like, I don't know about you, but I've experienced church. Um, I mean, I, I have the blessing of, blessing of working here, so I get to visit the Blessed Sacrament. Yeah. And um, I feel very privileged at this moment. I, and I pray for all those who are hungry for that opportunity to visit Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament. Um, but man, being able to really look at how am I living church at home, you know, and realize that the church, we're not bound by the walls. Like church isn't about the building, but it's about the people. And we know that, um, we know that. But deep within us, I think we're realizing that maybe there's some, there's some missing pieces in our life that don't really uh, fully allow us to live church at home even. Yeah, and you know, you make a very good point. We are the body of Christ. We are the church. And I think that for the first time, a lot of people are able to see that in a concrete way. And, mm -hmm. and it means differently now. It was some, oh, that's a nice word. And yeah, that's beautiful. We're the church. But now it's a lived reality. I remember I was with the Archbishop in Cuba. We were visiting right after one of the hurricanes. I don't remember which one it was right now. And we were in the car and we were visiting all these areas mm -hmm. that were devastated by the hurricane. And there was a church that was flattened. The only thing that, was, the only thing that survived was the, uh, the tile floor. Mm -hmm. And there was all these parishioners around and they had their, you know, their brooms and picking up debris. And I remember we, were, we got out of the car and we were with the bishop there. And he says to the lady with the broom, he says, your church is gone. It, there's nothing left. And she, she corrected the bishop. She said, no, the church is not gone. We're here. We're the body mm -hmm. of Christ. We're the church. And so that's that's, we're learning that in a, in a different way now. That's a very so um, let, let me just take a question here. I think this is a question that a lot of people have in their hearts. And, and I know they have asked me this a lot. And is there some other way to provide the sacrament of communion, some creative way other than mass online? Mm. And... I think that's the question right now. And um, the answer is we don't know yet. And mm -hmm. we're working on that. And I, I'm, I'm up at night thinking, how can we give communion to the faithful? There's a lot of people that are hurting, especially people that go to Mass daily that are desiring to receive Jesus in the Eucharist, and they can't. The churches are closed. They can't receive the Lord in the Eucharist. So how can we do this? And we're trying to figure out, here's the situation. I think that this is why the bishops right now are kind of saying we can't, uh, we're trying to figure it out and they haven't said, let's do it this way. Because I, I think what's happening is that, and rightly so, let's say that there's a parish, parish X, right? And the priest says, all right, we're gonna celebrate mass and then people come to the back of the church and maybe keep the social distancing six feet away and mm -hmm. we'll give communion that way. But the problem is, one, you're inciting people to leave their homes when the, the government and, and different municipalities are asking people to shelter in place or to stay at home. One, you're asking them to leave their home when we're trying to control this. And the other thing is, mm -hmm. imagine if a priest tests positive yeah. at Parish X, and then it's the flood of phone calls, and it's the worry, and it's, you know, Father gave me communion, he tested positive, he touched my lips, uh, when did he test positive, how's he, you know, so it's a lot, yeah. it, that would create a lot of anxiety like in, in people as well, so it's mm. it's a little testy, and but I, I am working on it, I'm trying to figure out what we can do. Um, I know the Archbishop is late, is up at night trying to think of this as well. We've talked about it, and it's, it's something that we're going to try and see what we can do. You know? Yeah, and that's actually some of the questions I got through the text is, um, yeah. you know, is there a way to do drive through Eucharist, drive through communion? And um, I'm glad that we'll be addressing some of that things today, and maybe the Archbishop might have some response as well. And, you know, two things just come to mind when we're talking about this is, um, I think about the mission trip we did in December to the yeah. DR. And one of the things that I was very moved by was um, when we were there, I mean, we were in a remote village mm -hmm. in the middle of nowhere, like legit. You can see as many stars as you could ever imagine. It was awesome. Yeah. Um, but the people's faith was alive and vibrant. But I remember something that deeply touched our, the young adults that were with us. And uh, the project that we were doing was a, um, 
was a water project. And so we were bringing water um, to a community that didn't have any clean water. And they were very impressed by the people's faith, but then also um, because you were with us, Father, they were, they were like, oh my gosh, we get communion again. We get communion again. Like they don't experience daily yeah. mass like we experience it at all. Yeah. And I remember that um, being deeply moved by like, I'm so blessed that I can go to daily mass. I can go th visit Blessed Sacrament whenever I want. And um, most of the world does not have that opportunity, you know? So I thought about our beautiful community in the DR that we visited, uh, Los Reganos. Remember people were walking like hours to go yeah. to that mass. They walked, I mean, yes, oh my gosh. They were walking like three hours through the mountain jungle, which was epic, and I was very impressed. <laughs> yeah. Um, but they, I don't know, they knew the value of the Eucharist and they knew the gift it was. And we're kind of in solidar solidarity with them right now, um, that we don't get this, uh, the blessing of the Eucharist isn't accessible to us like it was, um, you know, a month ago. But I don't know, that was one thing that's coming to mind is a lot of parts in the world, they, they don't have what we have here. Right. And so, man, when that when things go back to normal, you know, and we have that opportunity to go to daily mass, to visit the Blessed Sacrament, um, I think we should really challenge ourselves, like, to take advantage of the gift of our faith. And that, again, most of the world doesn't have this, but, but we do. And these are things that we should incorporate into our life in a new way. You know? Yeah, and people are hurting. They're, they're, that's one of the things that they, they really miss a lot is uh, being able just to, maybe just to walk into the parish and mm. sit in a quiet church or come before Mass and say your prayers and your devotionals. And um, Hold on, here's the Archbishop right now. Oh, wonderful. Oh, wait, it's missed the call. So as he gets the Archbishop on the line... Um, yeah, I just hope that that's something our community grows in is gratitude. And here he is, right here. How you doing? Wonderful. Good, Archbishop. Welcome. How you doing? Welcome, welcome. I was trying to get my iPad to work, but it wouldn't, so I'm just holding my cell phone. <laughs> <laughs> that's fine. I can see you. You're fine. tech savvy. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for well, joining us tonight. Not well enough to get my iPad working, but anyway, there's <laughs> something wrong with it. So you can hear me fine. I can hear you fine. So how are you doing in all of this, and uh, what, how's the Archdiocese? Well, the Archdiocese is, uh, is doing what it can do, and the Archdiocese is all the people here in this South Florida right. area are Catholics, and, uh, and so uh, all of us are facing a, a Lenten that, that has a unique fast, yeah. a fast from Mass, a fasting from Holy Communion, and a fasting from the normal social context that contacts that make life uh, bearable and interesting and joyful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Have you so, seen? Have you ever experienced anything like this? I know maybe nine eleven, but anything like this before? Well, you know, as far as the fear and the apprehension of the people in the early nineteen eighties, uh, I, I experienced some of that during the early stages of the AIDS epidemic. Right. Because people, people were very frightened. Uh, and just like now, sometimes that, that fright was irrational. And, and so, uh, you know, I think uh, the best, uh, the best disinfectant, uh, disinfectant for irrationality is, is just reason and calmness. So we have to be calm and reasonable and not lose our composure. Yeah. Uh, and that's... Well, you know, easier said than done, especially when you have a lot of kids at the house making noise and everything like that. Yeah. But it's a necessary thing that we yeah. have to do. Yeah, and as you know, a lot of people are being affected, a lot of hardships and financially, some people are being laid off. And um, what, what's, I, I understand that you're doing a coronavirus relief fund. Can you just explain a little bit about what that is? Well, you know, we do that... Uh, after any disaster, natural disaster, or, or something like the Archdiocese of Miami was very generous to the Haitian people after the earthquake in 2010. Right. Last year, after hurricane, uh, the hurricane that hit the Bahamas, uh, uh, the people were very generous to the Bahamas. And so uh, this time we're asking people to be generous to their, to their more immediate neighbors here in South Florida that will be will be suffering and the church is uh, always going to be looked to, to for for assistance and for relief 
Uh, so, you know, we, we continue our mission, even though the circumstances are a bit uh, uh, unique and a bit different and and truly challenging for all of us. Yeah, well, you've been very good at communicating with the priest and, and keeping us up to date, and I, I really appreciate that. What, do you, what, do you, what are you hearing from the priest, and uh, how are you encouraging them to stay somewhat available to people? I mean, there is fear, you know, and having to go to the hospitals and... and... Right, and, and our priests are, are going to the hospitals when called. Right. Oftentimes, they have to be called by the hospital themselves because uh, uh, the their hospital is the gatekeeper and sometimes just because the family calls that doesn't mean the hospital will let the priest in right but if the family communicates with the hospital the hospital will usually call the priest and we have had priests that have responded to those calls uh, uh, I was speaking to one priest he says he goes a couple times a day to a hospital where uh, they call him and when they get there the first thing they do is take his temperature and they dress them up in a gown and a mask and really? they send them out to visit that person. So uh, priests are, are trying to do that. But we have to recognize, too, that uh, right now in the Archdiocese of Miami, uh, we have priests that are obliged to self-isolate because uh, they were exposed to someone that had the disease, that had the coronavirus, or, or, uh, or they, and they might not show any symptoms, but because they were exposed, they have to isolate themselves, and there are a few already that are uh, are showing symptoms and therefore also have to self-isolate themselves, and therefore they can't, you know, they can't be responding to people because they can't be putting people at risk. Right. Uh, then I have a number of priests that because of their age or because of a pre-existing condition uh, that, that really have to self-isolate themselves so as not to be infected by uh, by a casual encounter with a, a parishioner or with with somebody else. Uh, you know, I have several pastors that are over the age of 75 that are still serving, uh, and they would fall in that group of being uh, 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 especially vulnerable. I have uh, I have uh, priests with underlying medical conditions, uh, diabetes, uh, heart condition. Uh, uh, some somebody else undergoing some type of uh, you know chemo or something like that, uh, anything that would you know compromise their uh, their immune system or because their system is fighting another disease, you don't want them to get this virus to overwhelm them, so to speak. And so they have to they have to uh, isolate themselves. And so what I've asked the deans of the uh, archdiocese to do, and the deans are the priests that are my representatives to uh, the parishes or the pastors in a particular region of the archdiocese. I think we have seven regions or seven deaneries. Right. So I've asked each dean to uh, contact uh, their pastors within the deanery. And if there's a pastor who cannot respond to sick calls because he is self-isolating for any of those reasons that I enumerated, then that dean will make sure that uh, that call will not go unheeded. And so we'll find a, a younger priest or another priest to go in his stead because he can't go because of, you know, the isolation that he has to be under. Uh, so so that's one way that the priests are cooperating with one another uh, and and helping each other to, uh, to minister. Another way, of course, is what uh, uh, most parishioners have already experienced this past weekend is this new reality of the virtual mass or right. the mass that is presented through live streaming, through YouTube, uh, to through Facebook or, or, or other means. And so this is uh, something uh, that's very important, uh, you know, to keep our people connected with the church. Uh, one of the young adult groups uh, up in uh, South Broward County tonight, I think at 8.30, uh, they're doing a rosary through Zoom. Oh, so, yeah. you know, if you get on Zoom, you know, and connect with them, you can pray the rosary with them. So uh, there are lots of uh, creative things that are happening, and uh, hopefully uh, those things will will help us during this, uh, during this, uh, during this uncertain period. Of course, uh, you know, it comes at a particularly bad time for us Christians, because Holy Week is the central week of our 
of our liturgical year. And so we're not going to have very much of a Holy Week, at least not in the traditional sense of the word. Right. The traditional sense of having of the way that we've celebrated Holy Week in the past. Uh, so, uh, you know, we have to adapt and uh, we will try to adapt and and we will pray that this uh, this pandemic will be over sooner rather than later. Yeah. Well, we just wanted to touch base with you this evening and see how you're doing and, and take the temperature. But um, we're so glad that you're able well, to join us. My temperature, I think, is <laughs> I'm, I'm maybe sweating a little bit right now because I'm in the chapel because I thought the stained glass window in the background would be very nice. Yeah, that is and very nice. Of, that it's is. kind of warm in here uh, this evening. Uh, it, it's, you know, not everybody has stopped working because tomorrow... Uh, my house will be tented because of termites, and oh, so wow. I, I, I'll have to move out for a couple of days. But uh, but anyway, uh, so you know we're getting ready, and uh, and so if you see a few beads of sweat on my forehead, that's because <laughs> I've been involved with getting ready and putting some stuff together and stuff like that. But uh, uh, you know, we, I try to keep in contact with the priest uh, uh, through almost daily emails now, yeah. and. Uh, and uh, we, we, uh, you know, I'm encouraging the priests to to stay connected with their people. Uh, I think a lot of parishes, you know, they they have very active ministries, and and this is a time for those ministries to uh, to put together some what they could call, you know, phone trees, right. you know, where you call different people and and, and uh, check in on check in on each other, especially you know the um, uh, the elderly people that might have to. Well, they should really be self-isolating themselves, and yeah. and uh, and and uh, so therefore, you know, a phone call, uh, you know, a message of hope, a prayer, uh, recited together, all these things can be very important. Uh, you know, we have to remember, you know, the example of the Japanese Christians. Uh, you know, uh, Saint Francis Xavier preached the gospel to Japan, uh, maybe almost. Uh, 400 years ago, yeah. and uh, the missionaries were expelled, and yet the faith survived. And 200 years later, when missionaries came back to Japan, uh, they uh, there were Christians that sought them out, and they they kept the Catholic faith alive uh, in the home by by praying, by learning the catechism, but they kept the faith alive almost two centuries without mass, without Holy Communion, right, uh, and. And, you know, we remind, we're reminded of what Jesus tells us in the gospel, where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there in their midst. And, and so uh, the, uh, those of uh, your listeners, our listeners that are, uh, that are with their families, uh, I think it's a great time to re- rediscover the, the family devotion of the, of the rosary, of a rosary prayed together in family as Father... Uh, Patrick Payton, uh, who was known as the Rosary Priest yeah. in the 1930s, in the 20s and 30s, used to say, the the family that prays together stays together. Amen. And uh, and uh, you know, it's a prayer that's accessible to the learned and the unlettered, and and even a child uh, can participate by taking a decade himself or praying one of the Aves, uh, and so it, it it encourages participation from the entire family. And in the recitation of the rosary, we contemplate Jesus through the eyes of Mary. And something to remember today as we observe the Feast of the Annunciation. Amen. Well, thank you so much for joining us. And and that's exactly what we're trying to do. We're trying to connect with our parishioners and and have that sense of community. And we're reaching out to them and calling them and making sure that the ministries are still going and that they're still connected to the parish. So thank you for for what you're doing. All right. God bless. Thank you for what uh, you're doing in the parish and, and for what your parishioners are doing to keep the faith alive. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Archbishop. Wow, that was really awesome. Um, that closing about the Japanese missionaries, I think, really was very inspiring. And also, you know, like if look, looking at our culture right now, like we're, we're in that situation where the faith is depended upon the families really growing and taking ownership, yeah. you know, and I think in our culture, we have um, a habit of 
oh, like the church will teach us, like leave it yeah. on the church. Like the priest will do all the hard work, you know, or like the priest are who are holy and send our kids to get that kind of, you know, education and teaching from them. But, you know, the, the family is the first, um, the first teachers of the faith, yeah. the, the domestic church. And um, if the Japanese in that situation, in that mission territory, I mean, we're on mission. We're bringing the mission back home in a whole new way. And, and what he um, said was, a, it is fascinating. I, I've heard that before is, you know, when the missionaries came back to Japan, they were Christians. That means that they were continuing with their domestic church. They were baptizing, uh, yeah. you know, the, the, the pagans or the, you know, mm. those who are coming into the faith. And uh, so it's, it's fascinating. There's a question here, Father Vigo and Michelle, does the Archdiocese have any plans or, or system in place to support smaller parishes who may not have the technology or resources or ministers of people whilst churches are closed? We're here to help you. Mm. If there's a priest that's watching or a parish or a community that needs help, we're here. We, um, Daniel's here with us. Uh, he's a parishioner that's helping us with the productions. We were on a call today with a parish who uh, needed help. And so I'm, we're here for you. We're all learning and we're all in it together. So, mm. so. Yeah, that's, and I think to reach out to your neighbors and your friends and to check in to ask if they've gotten connected, you know, to not just, you know, worry about your family, absolutely, and make sure that the faith is being, continued to being learned at home and um, connected to your parish, like especially through our live stream and things that we have going on here, but also uh, reach out to your friends, you know, ask them if they're connected, invite them to, you know, join you for a live stream mass or yeah. something that will enrich your faith a little bit more. And one of the things I'm asking all of the ministry heads, I sent an email to all of you, is to please reach out to all those who are in your ministries, check on them and see how they're doing, if they need anything, but then also to continue to try to have your meetings and I'll be part of them. I'll, I would love to have a Zoom uh, chat or to create mm -hmm. some sort of uh, uh, venue where we're all together and we can, because the ministries need to continue. Um, so I think that that's a great idea. I just wanna highlight, we have a text that um, just mentioned that um, as a grandmother taking care of her two grandchildren um, she's treasuring the opportunity to start the day with the rosary. In the midst of the crisis, we see the hand of God through new opportunities we have. Thank you, Father Vigo and St. Augustine, for being that light that we so desperately need. Amen. So, yeah, God is doing new things, you know. Somebody says, Archbishop with the Guayavera, very Miami. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, always born. Always born Miami. Very born Miami. Miami. <laughs> Man, that's beautiful. And, Father, what do you think um, are ways that... Um, as we're talking about living the faith at home and allowing that to be the place where things are strengthened right now. And then we connect to, you know, the larger parish through the live stream, the things that are happening, but allowing our home to be the focus of strengthening it, you know. Um, well, you know, one of the things that I think is very important is that families make a plan for Sunday. Mm. It, just because you don't have the Sunday Mass to come to, you still need to structure your day and make a plan and say, okay, if you're, we're not going to watch the live stream, it's still recorded. We could watch it anytime during the day, but let's make a plan where the family sits together. Maybe you say some prayers before, maybe uh, you print out the mm -hmm. readings and you can talk about the readings of the mass that day. Make it more than uh, just turning on the TV or the computer. Um, make a plan. You were talking about domestic church. I think we're going to talk a little bit more about mm -hmm. some ideas that mm -hmm. we'd like. Do you want to talk about that now? Yeah, I'd love to talk about it. Um, so it, just in our conversations and from a lot of the parishioners and people that um, I've been speaking with, you know, now is the time to call our domestic church to rise up, to really take ownership of recognizing that the family is the domestic church, the faith, um, home of the faith. The faith is at home and that's where it needs to be strengthened first. And so we're, we've come up with a plan of um, having like a family challenge every week uh, one way to concretely grow and strengthen your um, your home life to be more of church. Yeah. And so our first kind of challenge that we're extending to the families is to create a, a space of prayer for um, in your home, which I think is really beautiful because we think about it, our home says so much about ourselves, right? You walk into someone's home, the things on the wall, the, what you do with the rooms, how you decorate, everything says a lot about you and what your, where your priorities are. And I think uh, this challenge is a great way to look at, do we have a space in our home that honors Christ? that says that Jesus has a place here, a home here. You know, I, and again, and kind of getting out of that habit of being like, oh, well, the church is out there. Like, I have to go to church. Well, yes, but no, right, you know? Maybe like a little both. small altar and... So yeah, a prayer, an, an altar, or um, we um, talked about this the other day, and there's, I had a young adult that shared with me after 
this is before we even talked about prayer spaces and stuff like that in the home. She's like, oh my gosh, the other day when I was watching Mass, I was inspired to, she put like a, like a little cardboard box and like two candles and a crucifix and like that was her prayer space where she, yeah. when she watched Mass or when she would open her scriptures to read, she had like a little space in her home, her home to remind her of, of Christ and, and to be a sacred space in the home to set aside. And I know um, I've had the great blessing of, of having a, like a prayer room um, in our home, and that makes a huge difference where it also makes sure, well, it first makes sure that I'm praying <laughs> and that that is a part of my regular routine. But also it, it says that, you know, Christ is at the center of my life and that there's a space that honors him and also invites me and calls me every day to come and be with the Lord, to make time for him. And um, I think, well, you know, I mean, what a great it, teaching moment for kids too, to yeah, know that that's And the thing is that we, we, the church is not available. Right, especially now that the church isn't available, to be able to, um, unfortunately, you know, make some changes in the home that will hopefully inspire you even when the church is open. Like it's a deeper connection and it says just something profound about the faith that it's not something only in the church walls or we have to go out to get, but it's something that's in our home. And again, that's, you know, the family, the parents are the first formers of the faith, the first revelation of who God is to the kids. And so in the home, we have, to, um, we have to rise up to make that really possible and true and to strengthen it. And uh, now that you can't go to CCD or you can't go to events at night, um, man, what an awesome way to, be, to make a plan. You know, like mom and dad sit down, make a game plan. All right, the faith is important. It's something that we're going to take advantage of this time at home. Let's make, how are we going to pray as a family? You know, it's one of those things that I'm sure when people get married and start having kids, they're like, oh, we should probably pray together. Or, you know, it's things that you easily lose because of the busyness of life. And so now that we have more time probably than we ever wanted <laughs> to be able to look at what is, what's the habit of our family? You know, how do we know that Christ is at yeah. the center? And what are some new ways that we can grow in praying, but then also making the resources available like form.org is an awesome online program, a platform that, um, you can go and probably learn so much about the faith with your kids um, or just with your spouse or whatever your situation is um, to make a plan to be formed more deeply in the faith, which, man, when you come back to the church now in a couple you know, weeks, you're going to be on fire in a whole new way and hopefully hungry to, to continue those habits that you've made at home right now. And what a joy it will be when we get back. And oh my gosh, it's going to be amazing. I, I, I thought about it the other day when I was, uh, when I was, at mass and I was about to give the homily and the saddest thing, it's just an empty church, you mm -hmm. know? And I said this last night to you, I was, I had to kind of get it together. I was like, okay, keep it together because it, it's, it's a pain. It's, it's very mm -hmm. sad what, what's happening right now. But think about that day when we are back in church and we yeah. could hopefully never take it for granted again and say, this mm -hmm. is my home. And uh, thank you, Lord, for allowing me to worship you in this space. And uh, that it is available to me again. And I think, you know, there, it's a little bit of solidarity of people, I, and you touched upon it in the Dominican Republic, and in solidarity as well, a lot of the people, you know, they had a synod on the Amazon just recently, a, a lot of people mm. who would love to be able to go to mass or church, and there aren't, pr there are no priests available. Yeah. Um, so perhaps we're in solidarity, a lot of, of some of the people who aren't able, aren't able to uh, receive the Eucharist, and perhaps that's someone in our in our neighborhood, as mm -hmm. someone who is not because of whatever reason they're not able to receive the Eucharist. So, it's important. I think it's yeah. really important. And you know, we're we're not entitled to it. It's one right. of those things too that I. It is such a it's gift. Like all of what God's given us is gift, and especially the sacraments. They're such gifts, and I think sometimes even in, our, you know, American culture and church we can kind of get into like a little entitlement, you know, like I'm entitled to mass, I'm entitled to confession at my demand, you know. And this situation kind of puts us in a place of humility to be like, man, like it's it's gift. And so hopefully it when gift. it's it's the opportunity is back, we can um, we can take advantage and have that heart of, humi of humility, of gratitude, and um, again, allow it to be something that God will use for a great good for, for, for yourself personally and for your family and, um, yeah, so much God can do through all this. But I do want people to to stay home and to just wait. I, I told my mm -hmm. mother, I said, Mom, even though she doesn't like this, no one in, no one out. Stay <laughs> home for right now, you know, and and our more elderly population need to stay home and, and it's it's changing every single day. So mm -hmm. um, yeah. we're gonna see. We're gonna see what, every day, this is fluid. Every day it's, uh, it's changing, and so yeah. we just gotta 
we got to do this to stay connected to see uh, until we can do something else and we can get back to our normal lives, which hopefully that'll yeah. be soon. And you know, while we're in this new normal right now, um, you know, what are things we can do to make the best of our time? What are some recommendations? I mean, we were talking about prayer, so yeah. maybe. What are other ways that um, we can encourage people to Well, you know, to you know what, and... something that's funny is, I, which I love, I see, have you seen a lot of people walking around and doing more exercise? Um, I mean, I'm saying, yes, it's now everybody's like, exercising, are... you know? I think it's because you're, you're, you're cooped up in your house and so you're saying, I, every, I gotta go for an exercise, you know? You've never exercised before. No, but I gotta go for a walk, you know, which is great. I think it's, it's wonderful. Yes. I went to the University oh of Miami gosh. to take my walk and there were so many people walking around with their dog and, and playing with a Frisbee and I said, I was thinking, there's more people here than there are students. You I know, know, it's kind of like, wait, where's the social thing? You know, like so well, many the people crazy, are out. The, one of the crazy things is I'm walking down the sidewalk and I see uh, a couple that's coming. They went on the other side of the of the, of the road. I was like, I'm not going to sneeze on you or oh cough gosh, on you. you know? that's but so that's funny. the new normal kind of. Yeah, the new normal. And you know what? Families are spending time together, right? Yeah. And people are able to go outside. And so taking that rosary that Archbishop was talking about, take it for a rosary yeah. walk, you know, like be creative with ways that you can, um, you know, it's not just sitting down and praying in our Father and that's prayer, but like grow in your life of reading scripture together. Again, rosary walks are the best, especially now it's gorgeous outside, like take advantage. Yeah, um, we may walk and pray. Yeah, walk The and other pray. day I did a video on, I think I put it on Twitter, I don't know if I did it on Instagram, but, it, and I think, uh, Graciela, who helps us with the Adoration Chapel, she was the one that told us about it, that, uh, you know, to, to, why don't you pray while you're washing your hands? Because mm -hmm. I don't know about you, but before I used to wash my hands like this, okay, they were clean, but now it's like this 20 <laughs> seconds. I was like, 20 <laughs> seconds, that's a long time, you know? That's hilarious. So I was like, okay, we gotta pray. Maybe we'll do the Our Father and Hail Mary by the time you, you dry your, your hands. But, um, but yeah, it's a new normal and... Uh, and this is a time for great creativity, you know? and. God is the God of creativity. Creative. And so things like this, but also in your own home, like, I don't know, be creative with how the faith can be something that comes to life in a whole new way. And, um, and yeah. And how do we pray differently? Yeah, and I think praying differently, again, I, rosary walks, scripture. I think scripture is something, especially to dive into if that's something new, praying scripture with, with your family or on your own, going through the New Testament. Um, I know for the college students I work with, I always challenge them, like, you know, how do you know if you're a disciple if you haven't read the New Testament, you know? And being able to um, encourage people to get into the Word of God, to allow it to be part of their life, um, so that the Word of God has more power than the TV, you know? That we know the truths of our faith and God's voice over us and in us is heard more loudly than the Netflix or the things that we're watching on TV. So I think that's maybe something we can talk about too, is there's also some great challenges in this time where there is so much time. Well, so the, what do we do? And also the scariness and the anxiety, yes. but how do you turn that into a blessing? Right, right. And that's... Not you know, allow it to consume you and say, okay, we are spending a lot of time with the family. Right. Mm -hmm. I don't want to go back four months or two months or a month later and say, I should have maybe taken more time with my family and use that space to grow in the faith and mm. pray more. And, uh, you know, there's some dads right now who haven't spent a lot of time with their wives and kids because of the craziness of their jobs. They're yeah. having to work from home. And so they're now they're they're learning to be family in a different way and in and, and new ways. So I, I think it's a blessing. Yeah. And I, I think being aware of um, that it's going to be challenging because it's new, it's different. Working from home, for example, is yeah. not the norm, but it's going to be the norm for a little bit. And so being able to know where you're weak and to try to strengthen those things so that um, this time can be a time of blessing and not misery and not, you know, waiting until I can go back to work to get out of the house. Yeah. You know, I feel like it also is a, a little bit of a wake up call in, um, a wake up call for families to realize maybe there's things that need to be worked out, you know? Like Yeah, and I think it's being able to use this as an opportunity to bring prayer and bring faith and uh, devotion into your life, into your routine hmm. in a different way. Because now maybe you have a little bit more time. Maybe you don't have to rush in the morning and to get dressed. And that's the excuse usually, right? I don't have any time. I don't have any time. I don't have time to pray. We don't I have, have to <laughs> rush. I have to sit in traffic for an hour. And I have to rush and get dressed. And, you know, it, and so it's how do I kind of build up good habits? All right. We have the mayor of Miami, uh, Francis Excellent. Suarez, calling in. So I'm going to.
accept this. <laughs> Mr. Mayor, how are you? Hello. I'm well, how are you? It's good to see you. Good You're looking you good. I'm getting ready for a commission meeting that I have in the next 20 minutes. Oh yeah, I'll say a prayer for you. <laughs> Our first virtual commission meeting. Is that right? Listen, it's I just, just like, want to tell like you that, perfect. let me tell you something. I am so proud of you. Uh, you are leading this city well, and people are just talking great things about you. But Thank tonight you. is not about that. It's not about regulation, not about shutdowns, about no, none of that. I want to talk to you about your faith. I want to talk to you because you've done great with, uh, with your blogging. Mm -hmm. Allowing Thanks. us to enter into your life and to see how it's gone for all this time. Um, I thought the know. first thing you were going to thank me for was not decontaminating, not contaminating you. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say that, but I said maybe I shouldn't say that. You know, I sat with uh, I sat with the mayor next to him uh, the Tuesday when Father Jacques Philippe was here, and we sat next to each other for about an hour and fifteen minutes. And it was actually one of the pulmonologists, one of the doctors here at the parish said, Father, you were sitting next to the mayor. Uh, you need to isolate yourself until you take a test and find out. So I said, oh, no. Oh, my God. <laughs> That's when I chaos. called you right away. Are you sure you're positive? You know, <laughs> I'm, I'm positive. I'm positive. You're positive. You're positive. But thank yeah. you for the blog and, and how you've been Instagramming every day with the progress. And, and thank God you're one of those people that are in the 80 plus percentage that are, yes. are, haven't experienced mm -hmm. many, uh, much of any symptoms. But I know it's got to be hard for you to be without Gloria and the kids, but talk to us a little bit about what you're doing to keep the faith and to, in your prayer life. And talk to us a little bit about that. Well, I mean, I think uh, I've always said, and it's every time I've got an opportunity to speak and you've given me a platform to speak, I think the, one of the most important things that I have is I'm very blessed to have wonderful relationships with so many priests that I can, that I can talk to. And so, you know, uh, as you can imagine, being uh, in isolation for 14 days is difficult. Um, obviously, uh, the hardest part is not being able to hug my wife and not being able to hug, you know, my two children that I absolutely adore. Yeah. But uh, but but my mm -hmm. faith, and and not just my faith in terms of my everyday exercise of the faith, which of course is very important, but uh, my my overarching faith and belief that God does everything for a reason, and it's pretty evident to me that he has decided for whatever reason to choose me um, to be the face of this virus, um, of this, um, you know, this COVID-19, so that I can have a platform to put people at ease. Yeah, because I think you were one of the first ones that was uh, detected. Number two. Second, second one in Miami-Dade County. Wow. Oh, yeah. and, um, and it's really allowed me to highlight work uh, of, of people like you that have uh, been, you know, uh, doing things that are, not conventional what are so important like like being able to give the sacrament of reconciliation and and the drive-through i think that's something that is you're you're healing people uh in so in ways that that you know that this disease couldn't hurt people and and frankly uh you know it's so inspiring and i, and I can tell you that whether you're catholic or whether you're you're christian or whether you're non-denominational or whatever one of the great things about uh what I consider God's pause button. I think that God, what God is doing with this is he's hitting the pause button yeah. for all of us. And I think one of the wonderful things is that it's, it's, it's made people adapt and it's made them come out and, and really um, use platforms like this to be able to communicate in ways that we were never able to do or we were not doing because we're so busy. Yeah, 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 no, definitely. And so what are some of the things that you do uh, in your prayer life? Because uh, I know you have a very good prayer life, but just for our well, listeners... Well, it's interesting because uh, after being at the, the seminar that we were at, you know, where uh, Father Jacques talked about, you know, praying, uh, you know, the ho you know, having hope uh, when you pray, uh, praying with faith, of course, and praying with love, uh, you know, those three things uh, were, I've been constantly thinking about them since that talk, right? So I try to put myself in that, in that frame of mind that, what I'm going to pray, I'm praying because I'm hopeful for the future, because I have faith that God is listening to me, and because I have love, not just for myself and for him uh, and for my family, but for those who don't have what I have. Yeah. And I think one of the, one of the interesting uh, things that I remember from that talk also, and we spoke about it a little earlier today, is, is when he said that we have to allow ourselves to let God love us. We mm -hmm. just, we get so caught up in ourselves, we get so caught up in our problems, we get so caught up in all these things uh, we have we, we end up being our own worst enemy yeah. and we eat at our own self-confidence. And part of it is because we don't let God love us. We don't let God demonstrate to us 
what we're capable of. But every once in a while, he hits the pause button and he flips everything around on you like he did on, on me. And I went from having probably three, you know, some of the toughest months of my mayoralty to being thrust into the spotlight on this issue. And, uh, and, and, and it's, put, you know, in a good way, sort of uh, turned my life upside down. Yeah, because I think you've helped a lot of people because a lot of people have had anxiety and I think they can watch you and, and follow you and say, okay, there are some very serious cases, but there are some cases that are asymptomatic. So, but I, I remember, Michelle, uh, you were saying something that was kind of powerful when you heard that the mayor was, uh, had tested positive. Yeah, it was it was crazy because there's like that crazy moment of like if Father Vagoa is positive, then like I'm probably positive. You're like I work with the man every day, you know. And but I was thinking about it, and I was I text Father Vagoa later, and I was like, Father, you know what? If we all end up positive, like I'm at peace because it was because our mayor is wanting to know about his faith and is willing to make time to get closer to God, and that's a rare and powerful thing. Yeah, you know. That's so that beautiful. was my response, um, Mayor. We were just I. I was inspired and encouraged of like, God's using this. And if sure. this is our chance too, okay, you know, but um, you've been like an amazing witness for all of us to know that, you know, we can love the Lord and serve him and we can even serve him in politics, you know, and yeah. um, thank you for your faithfulness. It's, it takes well, a lot Well, I definitely, I can't see you, but that definitely uh, oh, yeah, makes I'm over me here. A, Sorry. A, little, a little emotional. Uh, there you are. Oh, good to see you again. <laughs> you too. Uh, it definitely makes me a little emotional because um, you know, that's, that to me is the ultimate unselfishness for you to say something so beautiful like that. And, and, and really, I think, you know, we all struggle with making our prayer life more meaningful, mm -hmm. right? Because I, I repeat a certain set of prayers. And I think one of the lessons of, of that night was it, there's prayer can take on a variety of different ways. It doesn't, you know, just the fact that you're repeating prayers doesn't necessarily make it any less valid, right? As right. long as your heart is into it and you're practicing it in those contexts. And so, um, you know, for me, uh, it was, I really wanted to get there and, and, and um, you know, and, 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 and sort of reintegrate myself and rethink uh, and reevaluate, I guess is a better word, my prayer life. And I, and I, and I actually, there was a moment and, uh, where my mother-in-law, and hopefully she's watching this, where she got up and she asked a very, very good question. Yeah, that was powerful. I told her. Which, which was, what happens, you know, life is always trying to interrupt you. The devil's always trying to penetrate. He's always trying to get you off your game and, and get you to lose focus. What happens in those moments where you just can't concentrate, you know, and it just seems like you just don't have that direct channel with the Holy Spirit, you know, and, and, I, and I remember Father just, just saying, you know, those are moments where you just got to push through. Sometimes you just got to push through and, and it's not going to be perfect and it's not always going to be, you know, sometimes you feel like God's not listening or, you know, you're not hearing anything back. And, uh, you know, and, and yeah, yeah and, he said, kind of, and he said, and he said, and this is something that I loved. He said, if you're walking through a forest and you have mosquitoes constantly hitting you and on your face and on your body, you just swat at them and you keep walking. You know? exactly. So the distractions awesome. are there, but you keep walking. But okay. um, anyway, I know you got to go because you have a meeting, but I'm so grateful for you to just uh, chime in and, and to be with us tonight. I know you love this parish because you come here on Sundays uh, often and, uh, and I'm just so proud to know you and thank you for sharing your faith and, and you're proud of your faith, and I think that that's important that you witness to it. So. And thank you for walking it with me, buddy. If uh, if it wasn't for you, uh, I wouldn't be anywhere near as successful as I've been able to be. So God well, bless. You. I, I'm I'm proud to walk with you, and I'll continue to walk with you. So, thank, thank you. you. Have a successful meeting. Thanks. God bless. Take care. You too. Wow, that was awesome. So, excellent. No. What a great testimony. And you know? I think that that's important. I think that, um, you know, once, when the early Christian communities were in persecution and they were struggling, it was because people were sharing the faith. Mm. Why do you love Jesus? Why, why is it that you're a Christian? You're going to be persecuted. You're going to go through a lot. What, what is it? What is it about this man, Jesus, that, that, want, that compels you to live this Christian life? And so mm. listening to a politician say, I love the Lord and I pray and, and, and I come to talks and I come to mass every Sunday and I raise my kids in the faith. It's important. Yeah. And I think it encourages everyone, like no matter your situation, your workplace, to yeah. be able to be not afraid, be not to afraid. be you. And part of who you are is a beloved son or a beloved daughter of God. And Amen. to let that be what guides your decisions in your life. And that testimony God will use, you know, to the max. Right. Nothing will be wasted. 
And I, I love also that he, just from his sharing how much he was, he soaked in that Tuesday night, you know, uh, and how, I don't know, I loved hearing him talk about prayer. And I was like, man, he was in it. Like, you know, he was totally like soaking in Father Philippe's word. And um, yeah, it just is inspiring. And also, I think providential, right? A few days after that, he goes into his own little cloister for 14 yeah, days, exactly you know? exactly right. And um, just those, that wisdom of, of prayer to guide him. Um, and one other thing that really stuck out to me was um, God pressing the pause button. And I think a little bit of what we were talking about last night is, um, can we let God, like, let that be what God might be doing in our life right now, you know? Yeah. No matter our situation, that God is kind of, he's putting the pause button on our life. And um, man, we so rarely will we ever get this opportunity to really step back like this and look at our life, like to have an honest look at, what is filling my life? Yeah. You know, what is my life filled with? What are my habits? What is my, you know, is my identity wrapped up in my work, you know? And we'll know that when you start working at home and like, you know, the tense things that might be happening and struggles inside, man, this is, it could be a moment of grace for people to be able to pause and look at, you know, who am I becoming right now? And is it the person I want to become? Is it the person God's made me to become with my work life, with where my identity and value is placed, how I'm treating my kids, my wife, things I'm involved in. You know, we're kind of being stripped of things. And I, it, can be, it can be a moment of grace if we can take an honest look at who are we now and who can we become from our choices from here. Yeah, and I think we need to reflect on that. We need to take time because this is a very serious event that's happening to our world right now. And so we need to take the time to be able to, in prayer, bring it to the Lord and say, Lord, what do you want me to learn from this? Teach me. What are yeah. my blessings mm -hmm. in all of the craziness? But I want to I want to um, just talk to the parishioners, and I, I need your feedback. How do we reach mm -hmm. out to you more? How do I connect with you more? Um, I don't want to drive you crazy. I've been sending you text messages. <laughs> I make a, I give you a phone call. I send emails. Blowing I'm trying to phone. do Instagram and different things, and sometimes I say, is it too much? You know, yeah. and so I, I don't know if it is too much. I, I want mm. it's like my desire to connect with you and want to be with you. And but I want to hear from you. I need to hear from you. I need some feedback. I don't need oh, you guys are doing a great job, uh, they, which is wonderful. I love that. But I would love some feedback to say um, and maybe tell we can do this. What we're yeah, doing some, well, what, even you yeah. know, like good job. Why? What's why? Reaching why you, do you, know? you? Why do you like this? That would be helpful. You know, to why me. is it helpful to you? Um, you know, the drive through confessions, that, that, that's gone crazy. Mm -hmm. I, I've had so many people wanting to interview and, and I, I don't want to do that. I don't, I hate interviews. I hate the spotlight. I don't like to be, uh, but if it's for the God's greater glory, mm -hmm. yeah, let it be. But Like Fulton Sheen. Yeah, like Fulton <laughs> Sheen. But, um, so the drive through confessions, I saw this priest up in, I think he's in New England or something. And that's where I got the idea. But he was like sitting and the car drove up and he was sitting in the parking lot. And but I, I, just, I looked at that picture and I was saying, he's still too close. Yeah. You know, when people are trying to project their voice, they're kind of like little spitting little droplets. You know? <laughs> I was like, and with the air, you're going to take those droplets. I said, I want to be a little bit further away. But if I get further <laughs> away, smart. I'm not going to be able to hear. And then. How do we preserve mm -hmm. confidentiality? How do we preserve the, the, the sacramental seal? So I said to myself, you know what? I'm going to sit like 20, 25 feet away mm -hmm. in a chair in the shade. And so that, we, so that you know, the confession, it's not, because, it's not that it's done over the phone because a confession over the phone is not allowed. Correct. You can't right. just go call your priest. I'd like to go to confession, bless me, Father, for I have sinned. It's, that doesn't work like that. The priest has to be present, has to be physically there mm. for you to receive absolution. The phone is used for a listening apparatus for me to be able to hear. I remember um, I, a priest had told me once that they had confessionals, and maybe somebody remembers this. They had confessionals for like elderly priests. They would have like apparatus so that he could be able to hear, and you would like oh, speak wow. into like a little speaker, and then he would be able to hear. And then also too, I was thinking, in prison, what do you do like in maximum prisons when mm -hmm. you know a prisoner comes to see their, the the attorney? Mm -hmm. they, they have to use a phone. It's behind a glass. And perhaps the priest has to listen to the confession behind the glass over a phone as well. Mm -hmm. We're taking measures to make sure everything is safe. Nobody can hack and things like that. We have a really great team here that's helping with us that. But 
it's not that it's over the phone, it is that it's being used to be able to hear so that I can hear. Mm -hmm. And I have to tell you, some of the most beautiful confessions that I have ever heard have been in these last two weeks. I don't know if it's because people are anxious yeah, and nervous and I want to be right with God and I want to put my house in order. I don't know if it's that, which I, mm. I think there is something to that. But I think too, sitting in your car, in the familiarity of the car and in, in, in a safe space, people are opening up and they're, they're going to confession. I had people come in confession that hadn't been in confession in 15, 20, 30 years. Wow, that is incredible. That's incredible. You know, and so you say to yourself, this is amazing. Mm. This is worth it and it's beautiful and I hope that a lot of people come to confession. Yeah, you said something absolutely. like last night, even if you want to try it, you know, see what it's like. Hey, it might never happen again, right? So <laughs> I encourage everyone, come on down. Drive I mean, your confession. who knows? Somebody may <laughs> shut us down and say, that's not valid or anything. But the Archbishop did send an email to all the priests saying, I looked it over. I talked to Father Vigoa. The way he's doing it, it is valid. Everything looks good. So. Awesome. Good, good. So in that way. And what a gift just in the in this time of kind of crisis and where different people might have be have experiencing a lot of fear yeah. um, to be able to come to confession because that's something that is, again, a gift, not, nothing we're entitled to, but like a gift to be able to offer in, in this moment and that availability to come in to receive counsel and, and forgiveness and start again. Yeah, and then we have a question here. How do we keep it going post COVID-19? Let me tell you, I'm comfortable out there sitting in a nice, comfortable chair in the shade. You, I don't you mind. might need one of those, like, fan those, like, when it comes July, <laughs> well, you know? Well, come like, July, August, or September, you know, I, I don't know. We, get. we need to have a little, you know, uh, one of those air conditioners outside. But I don't mind it. I really don't mind sitting outside. And um, if this is something that the, the, the bishop has to kind of decide. We got a letter today right. from the Conference of Bishops saying that the bishop really has the authority to regulate how uh, these confessions are gonna be done and, mm-hmm. uh, to ma- and it's his authority to make sure that they're done properly and validly. So maybe we could say, you know, this has been such a success and people are coming in droves to come to confession. Maybe we can keep it after COVID-19. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Yeah, that's amazing. Maybe we could do that, you know? We'll definitely take advantage, again, Tuesday, Thursday, 4 to 7 p.m. every week, and then also Saturday, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. is when the drive through confessions are. Um, and if you're wondering, like, how does it all work, don't worry, just show up, and we'll let you know. Yeah. Like, when you come, there's um, people who are helping and instructing you where to go, where to park. Um, so have no fear, and um, just come and experience it. And then you can say, I went through a drive through confession. Some people might not believe you, so save the flyer. Well, I can but. send you a little video of... Uh, of <laughs> You know, Miami Herald did a good job with uh, with uh, covering that. But mm. again, I just, I, I want to hear from you. I One of the things in confession, too, is a lot of the parishioners have come through, and I, I haven't seen you all for about a week and a half, almost two weeks. And so mm. seeing you through the line, and or if you go to one of the priests, you're waving to me, and, and, and that's nice. Because uh, I think Catholics, we all have an attachment to our parish. Yes. I remember growing up in Winterhaven, Florida, and... Um, we sat in the same pew every noon mass every single Sunday, and mm. there's just that that comfort of uh, of knowing that this is my house, this is my church, uh, and there's a love for it. Yeah. You know, so if it goes on further in a couple more weeks and even a month, it's going to be painful. It's going to be hard. And so, how yeah. do we how do we be church in a different way, but it's still feeding you and nourishing you in the faith? Because that's what I. That's what I want. I want to, us to stay connected. It's not we were out for a month and, and we were disconnected, but we kind of stayed together. And in a sense, you didn't feel that you were all that mm. away. You yeah. Know? And I really got to say that um, some of the things I think that we're doing new that I hope stay after is I, I hope that um, you keep reaching out through text and phones because I think most people yeah. maybe have never been called by a priest or communicated in the way that you've communicated and I, um, I just want to commend you for that because I think it shows like that I don't know, you love your people you know and Thanks, you Michelle. it's okay if you stalk them a little bit you know like it's okay if you stalk well, I'm going to continue children. stalking you <laughs> until you tell me not to stalk you anymore <laughs> but we're coming up to our time and I just I want to end with something that uh, the mayor said and Michelle kind of reiterated about doing the pause button and it is a desert experience in Lent right now we We are living out the faith in a way that should help us to get to Easter Sunday, to the resurrection. And this year, we're experiencing it in a a far more profound way. 
So I would just tell you that, think about this. I want you to think about this. And I thought about this the other day when I was saying my prayers. For whatever reason, the Lord has allowed this to happen. And so we're missing him. You're craving to come to church. You're, you're, you're desiring to have Jesus in the Eucharist. Think about not having the Lord for two weeks like you've had. Think about three weeks or a month or six weeks down the road you who don't have Christ. How much you're going to miss him. How much you're going to want to be in the presence of the Lord, to go to Adoration Chapel, to receive the Lord in the Eucharist. Imagine you don't have him for six weeks. Imagine not having him for all eternity. And so we have to have our house in order. We have to continue to walk in holiness, find ways to really put our house in order to discipline our life in such a way that we put things in place to keep us in check and to really know our, ourselves and our relationship with the Lord is the most important thing that we can have. Why? Because I want to get to heaven and I want to have that relationship with the Lord. I don't ever want to be without the Lord. As I said in my homily last Sunday, there is no social distancing with the Lord. He desires to be right there next to us, but we got to allow it. And we got to allow him to walk with us because that's the whole thing. Christ continues to walk with you. We desire to walk with you. I desire to hear more from you to, to stay connected. So thank you so much for tuning in tonight. We're going to do this more uh, next Wednesday night, a week from next uh, a week from today. Dr. Ralph Martin is going to join us. He was supposed to come down to Miami for our Lenten reflection. And he's going to still, he's going to give us the Lenten Reflection. He'll chime in through FaceTime. We'll ask him some questions and maybe I'll take some questions for Ralph Martin. But join us next Wednesday for uh, Dr. Ralph Martin. Michelle? Wonderful. And just some closing announcements. And um, I appreciate that invitation that you gave this at the end to be able to, again, let the pause and to look at things. Um, and tonight might be a restart for you, right? How have you done so far? Don't worry about it. You know, today's a new day. Tomorrow's a new day. And to make me start, hit the restart button for your personal prayer life, for prayer with your family, um, and then other ways to be, to grow in your faith at home. Reading books online, there's resources too. So we hope that you take advantage and be creative. Um, and that goes with our first announcement is just, hopefully you received our email or maybe on our website, you'll see our Home of Faith logo, new logo, which is promoting um, the weekly challenge that we'll be giving to all of our families and our parishioners. Um, one way to incorporate the faith in a new way at home. And so our first challenge, what I mentioned before, was to make a prayer space in your home. And we want you to take a picture of it and share it on our Facebook group. So hopefully we'll get a lot of feedback and some amazing pictures. Which, by the way, I love those pictures. Oh, have you good. Seen, I've uh, seen a few of them. Yeah, I've seen a few of them. And some people have sent in pictures of them watching the Mass on TV. Oh, awesome. And so I love it. If you want to do that, if you want to send a picture of you watching the live stream Mass, and we'll tag you. We'll put it there and we'll put it on Instagram. But I really like that. Yeah, so a great way to, again, be in community, but in a new way, virtually. Um, so we do encourage you to share your photos on our Facebook page, um, especially of this challenge to create a prayer, a prayer space in your home. So I look forward to seeing those. And also I hope, again, it's, God will use that to transform your family and hun make a, a hunger grow, I think, in everyone to pray and to make sure everyone's praying. Uh, the other thing is that we have a podcast that's up on our website now. So if you're interested in listening to the homilies of Father Vigoa or Father Tron, or also even our live stream, uh, like our talk tonight, will be on our podcast. So you can also subscribe to an iTunes there. So it's on your iTunes podcast. Um, so we're getting totally up to date. So God Which, is by the so way, funny in I, the way I, that I mentioned done. this yesterday, but I, um, I went on the podcast and I was listening to one of the uh, homilies that I gave a couple weeks ago. And or no, actually last week, and uh, I was listening to it, and I said, I said that? I was like, that's pretty good. <laughs> that is awesome. Holy Spirit, man. No, but it, Holy Spirit. Man, so, so anyway, so um, check your app. Check the app store. There's uh, We're going to have an app just for the phone. So it's going to be St. Augustine. Everything's going to be on it. It's going to be so simple. You just push a button, and everything's there. So check the Google Play Store. It's available at the Google Play Store now, and then the Apple Store is still... Um, approving things. it, taking its time, but okay. I think that by tomorrow, probably it'll be available. Awesome. So All we right. hope that you're involved with us through the app, our Facebook page, our Instagram account. Yeah. We are ready to communicate and talk with you. So, and again, the feedback that Father Vigo mentioned, um, we love receiving feedback. And if it's good feedback, awesome. Let us know what you like about it. And if it's things that we can improve on, we'd love to hear that too, because we want to serve you well. So thank you so much. 
Stay strong, stay safe, and stay connected to Christ. Good night. Thanks, Michelle. Yeah, thank you. That was so good. God is so good.